Good morning friends. Welcome to Pannika Tutorials YouTube channel. In the last video, I have discussed about the importance of intermediate code and how to represent the intermediate code. I hope you have watched that video. If you did not watch that video, I request you to go back and watch that video and come back to this video for better understanding. In this video, I want to discuss about the three address code in detail. Okay, so I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. Now, let me discuss various forms like various instructions how we will represent in the three address code. Suppose let's take that a three address code will be consists of x is equal to y operator z where operator is a binary operator and y and z are the source operand and x is the destination operand. Is it clear? Suppose if you want to take the unary operation x is equal to operator y where here this operator is a unary operator. If you want to do the assignment or copy instructions in three address code we will represent like this x is equal to 5 or x is equal to y. Now 5 is a constant that value you want to store it in the operand called x. Here value which is there in the y you want to assign to the operand x. Is it clear? Similarly if you want to have the go to statement such as unconditional go to or conditional go to. Let me discuss about unconditional go to. You will write go to l1 or something where l1 is the address of the instruction you want to perform means this is the target location. If it is a conditional go to instruction then you will write some if some condition let's take that x greater than y this is the condition then you will write go to some l2. So if the condition is true then only you will go and execute the statements which are there in the l2. If the condition is failed you will write what are the things you need to perform here. Similarly let's take that if you want to call a function or how, how to start the function and end the function. Suppose if it is a high level language we usually write it as int main okay and we will write set of instructions. So main is also one function. Now the same thing if I want to write it in the three address code first thing is that I have to begin the function. So we will write in the three address code as f u n c function begin and the name of the function is it clear what is the name of the function you want to do it suppose if it is a main function then i will write f u n c begin and the name of the function is main here is it clear suppose if you want to end the function using the curly braces we can end it in the high level language is it clear if it is a three address code, I will write f u n c end. Am I right or wrong? Now similarly, if I want to call a function or if I want to pass the parameters to the function, then how I will write it is that, suppose let's take that I have in a high level language add a comma b is the high level language code to call the function with two parameters. Then how I will represent in the three address code is that first I need to pass this parameter. So I will write P A R A M param add. So this parameter A will be stored or pushed into the stack. Similarly P A R A M B. Now you are pushing the parameter B also into the stack. Now you need to call this function call. Okay. Name of the function. What is the name of the function here? Add and how many parameters you want to pass to so you will write two here are you able to understand so what are the elements which are there in the stack that will be called here so we have pushed the parameters first p a r a m a and p a r a m b and then we have called the function call add comma two okay suppose similarly if you want to pass the address then what you will write it as ref reference okay ref p a r a m reference parameter so if you want to pass the address of the a then you will write 
R E F P A R A M A. Is it clear? So the address of the A will be pushed into the stack. Is it clear? Similarly, if you want to pass the address of the B, reference R E F P A R A M B. Then if you want to call the function, you will write call add comma two. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? So R E F P A R A M and the parameter will pass the address of the parameter to the stack and P A R A M A means the value which are there in the A will be pushed into the stack. Then you will ask me the question, sir, how to return this functions? Meaning is the return statement. You can simply write R E T U R E and return. If you don't want to return anything, suppose any constant you don't know. Suppose if you want to pass the some value return some five or if you want to pass the value which is there in the some operand then you will write return c so these are the three address code coming to the functions now all these things with these things i want to discuss one more example for better understanding okay let me take a one high level long ways and convert into a three address code so that you will understand the concept in a better way let me take two integers int a of 10 integer arrays a of 10 comma b of 10 okay i is equal to 0 comma d is equal to 0 then i have written for i is equal to 0 i less than 10 i plus plus if this condition is true i want to execute the statements as d is equal to d plus a of i into b of i is it clear so this is the instructions are there in the high level long ways now this high level long ways i want to convert into three address code how we will convert i will discuss now first thing is that you need to assign the values i is equal to zero and d is equal to zero is it clear then you need to take the label l1 if i greater than or equal to 10 go to l2 meaning is that this for loop when you should start i is equal to 0 i less than 10 whenever the i value is equal to 10 or greater than 10 then you need to stop this for loop am i right or wrong if it is less than 10 you need to execute the statement so that is what i have written if i is greater than or equal to 10 go to l2 if this condition is fail, meaning is that when this condition will be fail, when i value is less than 10, then I will write the statements which I need to perform. So what are the statements I need to perform? First, I need to find the base address of the array of A and the B. So I will write T1 is equal to address of A, base address of the A I am computing. Then T2 is equal to i into 4. I am considering the integer occupies 4 bytes. Then I will write T3 is equal to T1 of T2. Then what is this one? Let me discuss for you. Now let's take that the address the array A, the base address is 100. Okay, is it clear? So I am getting the T1 is equal to 100, base address of the array I am getting. Then T2 is equal to i into 4. What is the i value initially? 0. 0 into 4 is equal to 0. Now T3 is equal to T1 of T2. I have written. So 100 of 0. Then what it will do is that 100 plus 0 it will compute and which is equal to 100. In this address whatever the value is there that value you are assigning to t3 are you able to understand it or not so this is the thing i have performed now what i want to do i need to compute the base address of the b so t4 is equal to address of b okay t5 is equal to i into 4 now lot of students will have the doubt sir already you computed the i into 4 and stored in the t2 so why you want to again compute you can use the t2 value this one we will not do it meaning is that we will not do the code optimization in the intermediate code we have a phase called code optimization in that phase we will do this optimization or reduce the length of the code is it clear 
when we are generating the three address code we will not do the optimization is it clear so now what i need to compute t6 is equal to t4 of t5 is it clear so i got the a of i value and b of i value where i value is zero initially so i got the a of zero and the b of zero which are stored in t3 and t6 respectively now what i will do is that i will take t7 is equal to t3 into t6 okay so i got this a of i into b of i that i need to perform to addition to the d so t8 is equal to d plus t7 then d is equal to t8 is it clear are you able to understand it or not now i need to perform the i plus plus meaning is that i need to increment the i value so what i will do is the t9 is equal to i plus 1 i is equal to t9 so i have performed this op instruction and then i have incremented the i value then what i have to do i need to go to l1 is it clear are you able to understand let me explain for you so that you will understand the concept i got the base address of a t2 is equal to i into 4 everything i have computed now i have incremented the i value is it clear now what will be the i value i value will be 1 is it clear so now t1 is equal to what base address of the array so which is 100 we have considered okay now t2 is equal to i into 4 now the i value is 1 1 into 4 is equal to 4 so 100 of 4 which will compute 100 plus 4 which is 104 in that address whatever the value is there that value will be assigned to t3 similarly we will compute the base address of the b let's take the base address of the array b is 200 then t4 can i erase this one then how it will work t4 will consist of 200 value which is the address of the array b then t5 is equal to i into 4 currently i value is 1 1 into 4 is equal to 4 t6 is equal to value which is there in the 204 that value will be stored in the t6 is it clear i hope you have understood t4 of t5 meaning is that it will perform the addition between t4 and t5 and whatever the value which is there in this address location that value will be stored again you will perform the this d is equal to d plus a of i into b of i then you will perform the increment then again you will go to l1 the condition is fail again is it clear then i value will be already 2 again it will be performed then again i value will be 1 again the condition is fail it will go when the i value will be done then the condition is this condition is satisfied if this condition is satisfied then what you have to do you have to execute the statements which are there in the l2 so let's take that here after this l2 suppose let's take this function or oh, sorry this for loop after this loop i have not given what are the instructions i need to perform let's take that i want to perform some instruction then at the l2 i will write those instructions is it clear so if this condition is fail we are written certain instructions it will execute once this condition is success meaning is that this for loop is failed then it will execute the statements which are there here that i have written in the label l2 so i hope you have understood about the three address code and how to convert a high level language to the equivalent three address code if you still have any doubts related to this concept feel free to ask me in the comment section i will try to clear your doubts as early as possible thank you for watching the complete video have a nice day